Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, we're gonna be doing some in-ground rooting of fig cuttings. And this is a term that I've coined that's called the old man, Ital the old Italian man way of propagating fig cuttings. And essentially, the story goes as my grandfather came over the house one day, super Italian guy, crazy guy, we don't know what he's gonna do. And he comes over, brings in these large two foot, three foot long sticks and starts sticking them in the ground. And we're wondering, what are you doing there, grandpa? Turns out they were fig trees, and that if you stick a fig tree in the ground, a branch, it will turn into a tree. And I've, uh, the more I've learned about figs, the more I've learned that we just seem to want to complicate things more than they need to be. And this is certainly a method that's been used for many years and actually is used commercially to propagate figs. So we're going to be doing that today, is we're going to be cutting, uh, using a lot of the cuttings we've had over the wintertime. Some we've taken off of our own trees in the fall, some we got in trades. We grafted a lot of things, we rooted a lot of things, but we still have a lot of wood that's been sitting in the crisper drawer in the fridge for quite some time. Why not make use of that? I have plenty of spaces in the ground here that I wanna plant more fig trees in. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. I wanna show you guys how I'm doing that, the steps that I'm gonna take, and then also show you guys some trees that have been rooting for about two months now Today is July 7th, and we have actually been rooting fig cuttings in the ground since May. And that's really probably the best time to be doing this, but because I have so many extra cuttings, I have so many extra spaces, I figured, why not just throw them in the ground and see what happens? So far, my success rate with this method has been incredible. So I'm gonna show you guys the trees that have been rooting for that amount of time. Um, no problem, we're gonna keep you guys updated on that and show you guys, I think, the results of what that looks like. I'm gonna put you guys down here for just a moment, and we're gonna show you guys this whole process. Essentially, I've just got some cuttings here. And you can see, um, a lot of these I decided in, in the fall, or in the spring, in May, to actually parafilm them. What is parafilm? It's this just wax that really keeps the moisture in and keeps the moisture out. So you want to preserve all this moisture, especially in July when it's really hot. It could also be really dry versus May in my climate is pretty cool. So there's really little chance of desiccation in May, but certainly now it seems very likely. So what we did is we, we parafilmed the top and we can stick this cutting in uh, vertically. Normally that's what you would see, right? as well as any plant. You can plant your trees, your plants vertically, you plant them upwards. But with fig cuttings, with tomato plants, with pepper plants, with a whole lot of plants, they form uh, roots along every single node. And this is very important to be aware of. So we can also, if we wanted, is plant our cuttings in a trench and plant them horizontally. We can take our knife here, we can make a nice little trench with the knife, move some dirt away, stick this in the trench and cover that back up. Cover the top of this cutting very lightly with soil and these buds will come through that soil no problem. And in fact, we'll have a lot more points along the, uh, along the cutting here to root because we not only have, let's say if we stuck it in this way, we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven nodes underneath the soil but now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven nodes. So at every node, again, you have the potential for roots. Additionally, if we come in here and we score the bark just a little bit here, expose that cambium, roots will form at these locations. So this is a nice little other tip is that we can get not only root formations at every node, but also where we expose that cambium, expose that hardwood. This will callus up and root formations will form here in this location. So that's kind of it, right? And then the other thing we have to do is label. And I just use these aluminum tags here just to keep track of what this is. And that's all it is. So let me show you guys now the planting and show you guys some trees that we have actually been rooting for most of the year now. Hold on, I'm so, I apologize for the shakiness. We're just adjusting the tripod here, but. So here is a new planting that I've done. It's actually beautiful right now because everything's blooming next to it. But if I take you guys back over here, I wanna show you just how I'm gonna be planting this cutting. Bit of a journey to get over here, but <laughs> let me bring you guys back in here. And this is a 
variety called Bologna that I wanna plant. And you can see, this is a cutting we've rooted that really didn't do a whole lot. It hasn't really rooted itself out well. It's not growing very well. Here's another cutting that we stuck in the ground very recently. And you can see it's trying to push a bud right there. But what I'm also gonna do is take this cutting we just got and stick this right in here with the others. And this will just increase our chances of getting one of these to take. That's all we need is just one. And it could be here potentially forever. <laughs> all right, so let me show you guys now some cuttings that I've been rooting in the ground for quite some time, since May. So these have been in the ground for about two months. And I have a variety over here. This one's called Vasilika Black. I actually picked this one up from a local grower in the spring and he sent me some cuttings and you can see they're all rooted. There's about seven or so cuttings in here. One down in here, another one right here. Also this guy, these guys over here and I've actually pinched some of these to see if we could get fruit. And I think it actually was sort of likely at the time but it's looking like we're not going to but pretty much every single one of these cuttings rooted in May has taken and actually you're growing really well. By the end of the season, if you guys saw the videos last year that we did on this method, we talked about in-ground rooting, they were huge. In fact, they were right in this location last year, believe it or not. And I was shocked to see that some of them were almost five feet tall. I had a raspberry latte and I had an LSU tiger here in this location. Now that we've turned this into something else, but um, we dug them up. We showed you guys the roots. Everything looked great. Here's another variety here called Black Zadar. This is one that, believe it or not, was in a 10 gallon size pot. We overwintered this in the, in the, uh, underneath the sunroom and we planted this thing in here. But when I planted it, it really didn't look good. It was looking like it was gonna die. And here's actually the base of that tree. The whole root ball here is attached to this. What I did was to save this variety, I cut off the top cut some wood off that was healthy and viable and just stuck that in the ground. And look, now it's forming new leaves, a new branch, and it certainly has some roots underneath here. So yeah, I'm gonna have to start over from new, but this was, I think, the best scenario for me to save this variety from losing it here in my yard. Let me show you guys some other ones. We did a very similar thing over here with a lot of the varieties that we planted as 10 gallon size pots, we cut them all back to the base. Because fig trees in my climate like to grow as a bush anyway, we just cut them all back. And all that cuttings that we had up top, we just stuck them in the soil. And you can see this one right here is starting to grow. It's been taken quite a bit, but the one right next to it certainly has some really nice growth on it. And if I show you guys some other trees, we did the same thing to. Here's a variety over here called Black Beauty 10. Same thing, we cut the whole thing back right to the base, took those cuttings and put them in the ground right next to the tree. And this, the nice beauty about this is that, yeah, these are probably not gonna form super healthy trees uh, compared to the mother tree right here. But I have a lot of extra copies of these. I mean, this is like three or four different trees that if I wanted to, I can dig these up, I can leave them I can give them away to friends. Same thing with this variety over here. We cut the whole thing back, use the cuttings, and you can see that there's cuttings down here that in all honesty are just not doing that well. But we can't give up hope yet. I mean, there's a very high chance that these guys are gonna do something. Now let me take you guys across to the other side of the yard and we'll finish up this video here. I have some more cuttings that really actually some valuable cuttings that were not as long, not as thick. This is a variety called Campaneri that I certainly am trying to propagate as much as humanly possible. And I figured if I were to just stick it in a pot in May, it probably wouldn't have done nearly as well. And you can see I've already got two months later, some full fledged trees just by sticking in a pretty thin cutting in the ground. And here's actually a great example. We stuck the cutting in the ground, we parafilmed it, we just stuck it in there, and now it has quite a bit of growth. In fact, I probably could pinch this and maybe get a fruit or two off of this. That would be pretty incredible, but we're not going to. 
Um, some other examples over here, we have a black Celeste. This was given to me by my buddy Brian, shout out to Brian. And we had this rooting all winter time and it barely put out any roots. Finally, at the end of the winter time, early spring, it started to put out very few leaves, very few roots. So I just stuck this in the ground. I figured what a better environment in the ground than a pot. And look, it's really starting to take off now. Same thing down here. This is my Demos Unknown that's starting to get going. And then also this variety back in here called Pastelliere. This is from a different source that I'm really happy to have it from this particular source. And this guy, we just stuck two, two cuttings in the ground, didn't even parafilm them. And you can see this nice growth that's coming off of both of them. Really happy to see that. And then the last one I wanna show you, shout out to my buddy Coop. He gave me the Godfather fig, and this is exactly what this is. We just stuck the cuttings in the ground. We scored them. And of course, now there's new growth coming off of these. What we need to do now is put some excess soil around here, put some rocks around them like we've got on the other varieties, increase that heat, and we're good to go. But as I just showed you guys in those cuttings, is that most of them are planted vertically. And I do believe that that's just an inferior way to do this. If you really want better success, lay them out in a trench horizontally. That's gonna get you more roots faster, a faster tree, a bigger tree faster. And also, uh, you know, it's probably just, just overall better. So I wanna thank everybody here for watching this video, sticking with me here to the end. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you know somebody who is wanting to grow figs, send them this video, tell them about the channel, and we'll see you all for tomorrow's video, all right? Take care, everyone. Catch you later.